Yeah, no, I like Johnny a lot. I was actually I was one of the only ones who had his phone number in the whole milieu of everybody, and I, people would call me up and say, "Call Johnny," you know, because nobody had his phone number. Dee Dee and those guys, but he wouldn't give his phone number to anybody. He was he was very organization minded and very driven, and he was the boss for you know quite a while. I mean, he really was the boss of the band. And yet, he always says he wanted to be a ball player, and that's very you know, yeah. not certainly not an individualistic thing. It's all team. There's no I in team. No. So you know, I don't know what to say about him. Well, He's he wasn't a, a ball player. He was a guitar player. Yeah, so well. fuck that. Yeah, sure, Joey was always around. Dee Dee is Dee Dee were fixtures on the scene and Arturo had his loft that right was around the, the block. The funny thing is when Arturo used to always come to CBGB's with the mask yeah, on, the you know, mask. he had just like moved a, up from Mexico. For the first six months or so it, that he and showed... And nobody knew who he was and nobody he, saw his face. He only came with a wrestling mask on. And, a wrestling mask? Yeah, yeah one he of those, wore you know, a wrestling mask. Yeah, yeah for about six all months. Time. All the time. And, uh, and uh, he was the guy with the wrestling mask on. He had different masks, you know. And nobody knew who he was for quite a while. And, you know, initially, I mean, as far as how it was early, it was really great because it, the first year or so, the only people that were there were the people in the bands and they were the, and, or related to the bands. So it was completely incestuous. And as I've often said, the, probably the reason there hasn't been a scene like that since, or certainly not lately, is because nothing gets to percolate and, and, you know, sort of cooking its own juices for a while like that because the, everybody was there for a few years before anything, any attention came from, onto it. But it was really fun. I mean, I totally enjoyed the period. Yeah, you know, when the buildings went down, I, that was the only thing that I really missed. I mean, that, I just wanted them back. I wanted those years back so much. That was, it just, that was what gripped me, you what know. Feeling? The towers. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted it. I just wanted, you know, everybody was like so freaked out, you know, and I just. No, I've been missing uh, all that oh, shit I really for a want that time. shit back, you know. I, yeah, that was the only thing that I really missed. That, that's the only thing in my life that I, you know, really yeah. felt. Well, I. Like, wow. Think, did anyone tell the story about how Didi trashed Thunders in Paris at Steve Bader's house, you know? No. No? Oh, well. They had a big thing. Johnny and Dee Dee had a big falling out and were, had a lot of enmity between them. And um, Dee Dee was staying with Stiv in Paris. Stiv lived with this girl, Carol, uh, whose last name is unpronounceable and, and not remembered. But, and she's really great. She's still with us, at least, thank goodness. Barely. No, no, she's okay. Oh, Jesus, I'm a bitch. And, uh, and and no, she's nice. No, she's all sober now. No, she I is. know. Is she? Is she? Yeah, sure. Oh, well, see, time. last time I saw her, she was a complete. Well, yeah, I mean, fucking wreck. Back. Well, you know, she woke up and he's fucking dead in bed with her for God's sake. You know what are you gonna do? But um, so Dee Dee was staying with them, and she's, you know something went down about Johnny, and Dee said, "Well, just don't let Johnny come over." So of course, Viv <laughs> had had. Johnny come over from the airport with his bags and they, you know, Johnny passed out for a few days straight and in all that, somehow Dee Dee decided that, that Johnny stole his jacket or something like that and Johnny had this like sacred guitar, this like uh, right. Les guitar. Paul TV model, that yellow one that he played all yeah, through the yeah. early the, the doll stuff and Dee Dee like destroyed it and poured bleach all over his clothes and then trapped them all in the room and pushed furniture up against the door and was holding everybody hostage with a knife and as he ra <laughs> raved and went insane and there's probably more detailing you know and a lot of people sort of know that story but and all those people are gone it's really sad in a way you know Joey didn't have an evil side at all Joey was genuinely like just one of the nicest people one could run into on any level so yeah he, he yeah. started out being very shy Joey and you know very soft spoken and didn't really talk much, and he, you know, he's so far away from everyone. It's just sort of, and then, you know, after a while, he sort of loosened up, and you know, he's, he really is a nice person. And he, he's, what I liked about Joey was that he was really had a great feeling for rock and roll and the tradition of rock and roll, and 
you know, he really felt something for that. He felt uh, responsibility to that, and but it or, was real. You know, it wasn't like a pose. Yeah. And I see a lot of I see a lot of I see a lot of people. You know, just it's again, it's like an affectation. You know, they're, you know, knowing the names of bands and all this crap. But you know, he really is. He was really into it, and and it was really great for me seeing him come into this, his power, and you know, really see him become this, you know, powerful icon that he became, and that, that was a fantastic thing. Well, I mean, you know, on a weird level, I think Dee Dee was kind of jealous of Joey getting all the attention for dying, which is kind of sad, too, but I mean, like, it almost it almost makes sense, because Dee Dee had, like, at one point or another, they all told me, like, he had every single disorder, psychological disorder you could think of, you know, he would, you know, he'd be bulimic for a week, and he'd fucking, you know, and then he'd do this, and he'd do that, and, you know, whatever, so... Character. Yeah, but the last time I saw him, we went to a rubber fetish store, and he was going, "Oh, I don't know about this stuff. I can't handle this stuff." You know, you know what a fucking freak he is. I mean, not anything he didn't do or think at one time or another. He was putting on this big act of being innocent. You know, I had I had a lifestyle plaster nun, you know, from like a church lawn in my apartment uh, on the Lower East Side, and he was afraid of it. <laughs> and, and I came back one time and there was like stab holes in it. You know, like it didn't attack it or something, you know. Well, anybody that's in a band knows that, you know, it's difficult to, you know, get stay along with the fucking love. idiots in the same band yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like anything else. It's like a family. Yeah, you gotta work with a bunch of fucking idiots all the time. Alright. On that note. Thanks. I don't, I respect Thank that. Thank you, dear. <laughs> <laughs>